Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, this week in America. September 11, 2001, Allison Lanza Falls had just landed at LaGuardia, 847, on her way to the important client meeting she was conducting on the 99th floor of the World Trade Center when the terrorist attacks began. She had a great career as a Wall Street banker, a career and uh, a very supportive family. Enormous secret, though, she was silently and profoundly unhappy. After surviving 9-11, she realized she'd been given another chance to really live. Nine years later, she began an incredible journey of personal transformation with guidance from David Prudhomme, mind coach and founder of Madeira Wellness. Her story, her unique life experiences, and important life lessons using David's framework, The Best Me Now, in their book, Be Happy Now. Allison is a certified high-performance coach, certified stress reduction specialist, formerly a Wall Street banker, currently living on Catawba Island, Ohio, overlooking beautiful Lake Erie, serving others in their search for fulfillment and joy through coaching, writing, and speaking. David Prudhomme is the creator of The Best Me Now, a comprehensive program for fulfilling your physical, mental, and emotional potential, co-creator and co-author of From Stressed to the Best, an inspirational speaker, wellness consultant, and high-performance coach, founder of Madeira Wellness, former Marine captain, Allison Lanza Falls and David Prudhomme, authors of Be Happy Now, From Wall Street Ambition and Illusion of Success, My Path to Happiness, winner, by the way, in the mind category of Body, Mind, Spirit Book Awards, finalist in the self-help category March 2019, also finalist in the New Age Nonfiction category of 2018 Best Book Awards, Allison and David joining us on This Week in America. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the program. It's good to be here, Rick. Thank you. And it, thank you for having us. It Hi. is my pleasure to have both of you and so much to talk about during the program. And Allison, let's go back to September 11th. Just very briefly talk about that day. Mention you were on your way to the World Trade Center. When did you realize that morning the enormity of the situation you were facing? It took almost a half an hour for to really understand what was happening. When I first landed at LaGuardia, LaGuardia was totally silent. I walked out to find my limo driver. There were no horns honking. There were people scurrying. And we could see the tower burning. And the rumors were that it was a commercial aircraft that was, again, a tragic accident. So. We said, okay, let's go, and we got in the car, and we got to the Triborough Bridge, and then the second plane hit, and the rumors started to fly, and Manhattan was locked down. We had no access, no way to get to the office, much less to, to get to my client meeting. So we headed north uh, on, the, uh, on the interstate, and in the background, I could look out the window, and here, my driver and I were listening to the radio, and then it became confirmed that it was a terrorist. And when we looked out the back window and turned to see, we could see two plumes of black smoke rising up to a clear blue sky. And then the yelling and the scares uh, started, and that is when the towers crashed and that black smoke turned white. And all I could say was a prayer for all those poor, innocent souls that- And, and you were on your way to the World Trend, Trade Center. This certainly was a day that, that changed the world for so many people, yourself in several ways. You sort of used this, as I mentioned in the introduction, as what a way to sort of go back and, and reassess your life because as successful as you were outwardly, you were dealing with some struggles. You were not a happy person, were you? I was not. I was really desperately unhappy inside. And also, up until that day, not giving it a lot of thought. And so I feel that that tragic accident for so many caused me to step back and reassess my life. And over the next six months, I didn't make an immediate decision. It wasn't that I was afraid of the terrorists. I wasn't, okay? What I was looking at was, what am I doing with my life? Am I where I want to be? And I was able to negotiate an exit with the, uh, with the bank on very good terms. And I am so, so grateful for everyone who worked for me and who I worked for at, uh, at, at Bank of America. 
that I was able to leave on good terms. And so I came home to Catawba Island thinking that I wanted to get my personal life and my professional life kind of back together. And I get looking in all of the wrong places. I thought, well, I should do this, I should do that. I would, was going from Toledo to Cleveland to Columbus and running, and then I had a few more wake-up calls uh, that my husband had uh, an accident that wasn't uh, serious at the time. My dear Aunt Mary uh, was progressing with dementia, and I needed to take care of her. So everything really came together, and again, it said, Allison, you got to stop and do something differently. And that's when I called David. Well, and I want to talk about that, but I jump ahead. You said something that was interesting, and I think many people go through this. You were looking for an answer in all the wrong places. David, do you find that to be common among all of us? We, we know we need another answer. We keep looking for it, but we're looking in the wrong places. Yes, we develop patterns in our lifetime, patterns of thought, uh, patterns of behavior, habits, patterns of emotion, and patterns of reaction to people and things. And we think that's who we are because that's what we've experienced, but they're really just patterns that can change. Her pattern was interrupted by 9-11. That was a shock, and that caused her to start to think outside of that. Now, she did change the exterior things, her location, her job, um, many different things, but like most people, we look for happiness outside of ourselves when it's really within us. So people look to be happy when they have the right job, when they have the right partner, when they have the right bank account or get a new house. They're looking ex at, at external things to yes. try and make them happy. When in reality, those external things have been proven to not make you happy. It's an internal thing. Right. And instead of seeking happiness, happiness exists within us. We just need to find it and then work from that. And that starts with perception. Your perception of yourself, your perception of your life, and your perception of the world. And when we, when we understand that and start to change our perception, then we have awareness. And when we have awareness, then we have choice. And so it really becomes perception, awareness, and choice. So Allison followed that path, and also The Best Me Now, which is a program that I put together to help people find their full potential physically, mentally, emotionally. And so anyone can follow that path, regardless of your circumstances or situation. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes perfect sense. And the book we're talking about, if you just joined us and want some more information on the book, is Be Happy Now from Wall Street Ambition and the Illusion of Success, My Path to Happiness. On the program, Ellison Lands of Falls and David Prudhomme. Uh, the book's available at Amazon. I'll give you individual websites as we go through the program. I want to go back, Allison, as you're looking, you find David. What was it about David and David's message that was different where you knew, okay, this finally, I'm going to, I'm going to get some answers for, from this guy. What was different about David? What was different about David? It starts with the introductory meeting. And I came in to David's office dressed in my Wall Street attire. <laughs> David is smiling as you're telling the story, so obviously he remembers that day well. <laughs> I did. I interrogated him. I came in with my list of 30 questions, and David just sat back and relaxed into it and made sure that I had all my questions answered. And so there was an instant comfort that he was listening to me, that I was able to trust that we were going to focus in on the issues that were important to me. And as I signed up, I just signed up for, you know, one or two sessions with David. And he just eased me into it, starting with breathing, deep diaphragmatic breathing to uh, trigger the relaxation response. And that allowed me to start to understand that I could take control of my emotions. I had not been able to talk about 9-11 without breaking out into tears, okay, for seven, eight years. And after that very first session, as I started to do the breathing, as I started to take a look at, I did have the power to choose. Choose your emotions. Choose my emotions. And things just started to change. And that got us started on 
a path that I had absolutely no idea where we were going. Of course, David did, but I didn't. <laughs> Boy, and you talk about that in the book. You didn't know that this was a proprietary program. And you talk about that because you said, had you known this, you, there was going to be a checklist type thing, and at least mentally I was going to have to go step by step. I wouldn't have done this. That's not what the program, it's all individual, and I'll ask David about that here in a second. But for you, this was a program that you were comfortable with. You didn't feel like you had to sit with a clipboard and, okay, I've reached this emotion, I've conquered it, check, and go on to the next one. That's right. It was not a one-size-fits-all. Yes. And I came in thinking that I was very special. And because of my background and accomplishments, uh, I thought I was special. And that, that, that's why I didn't want just any old program and a checklist. Exactly right, Rick. And David, talk about the individual. I'm assuming everybody that comes through the door, a big part of what you do, at least initially, is listening and finding out who these people are and then tailoring an approach based on who they are within. Yes, I spend two hours with the client in the first session. Most uh, coaches and, and hypnotherapists and helpers spend about 45 minutes. And I spend a good hour and 15 minutes talking about how their mind works, how their conscious and subconscious mind works, what's happened to them in their lives, any traumatic experiences from their past. Um, we talk about you know, their belief systems and really teaching them how their conscious and subconscious mind works. Most people don't know how their mind works. So whether it's grade school, high school, college, PhDs, we never get taught how our mind works. So I'll teach us how to drive a car, how to do this and that, but no one ever teaches how your mind works. And that's probably one of the most important things to know because everything starts with your mind. So the first thing is getting them out of fight or flight. Most people are in fight or flight and don't even know it. Uh, and that affects you physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, your hormones get out of balance. It affects 85% of all illness is caused by stress. So by reducing their stress and getting them out of fight or flight, teaching them the breathing techniques, teaching them to choose their emotions, that their emotions are choices, instead of reacting in the ways they've reacted to different things in the past. And then that gets them out of fight or flight, and then their hormones get into balance, they start eating better, I work with them on their eating, everything. So it's a whole person thing. And each person has different needs, but everybody's mind works the same way, everybody's uh, body works the same way. And so by getting them out of fight or flight in that first session, they're more calm, they're more relaxed than they've ever been in their whole lives. They can do it for themselves because they teach them the breathing technique to use in the morning, at night, five times during the day, and at different occasions. So once that happens, they start making these changes, and then it kind of snowballs. They come back for their next session. If they're not doing everything that they wanted to be doing, then I know there's a subconscious resistance, and then we work on that negative or limiting beliefs from our past we all have them i'm not good enough you know i'm a yes. level those types of things and once we change those then we get into forgiveness forgiving people forgiving ourselves um, forgiveness is a gift you give yourself because the other person's moved on anyway and you can say consciously you've forgiven somebody but 90 percent of your mind's subconscious and if that part of your mind hadn't forgiven them it's not working well, that is interesting because you have so many people that say, I just can't forgive. And what you're saying, I think, is we're really not forgiving them. We're telling ourselves we are forgiving so we can finally move on. We're not carrying this, this resentment, this hatred around for the rest of our lives. We sort of let it go by saying we forgive. And there's a process that I use where you actually get in a chair and you're the other person. And I hammer you. And... <laughs> and you, you, you then see it from the other person's side. Did they really want to hurt you? Was that their intention? Or was it an accident? Or were they trying to help you? A lot of parents try and help their kids a certain way, and it ends up not working for them because they have a different personality type. Uh, and, and so there could be a lot of forgiveness, and forgiveness heals you. It really does. And one of the gifts I think David has given to everybody is that he has shared his process and he and I have actually shared the script, some of the script that he uses on forgiveness. And it totally set me free. It's also about forgiving others, but it's also about forgiving yourself. And we all make mistakes and we're all maybe our toughest critics. 
sometimes. A major part of the book is the six steps to happiness, and we'll talk about that. Time going by way too quickly. With us on the program, David Prudhomme and Allison Lands of Falls. The book is Be Happy Now from Wall Street Ambition and the Illusion of Success, My Path to Happiness. Books available, of course, at Amazon.com. Allison has a separate website, as does David. I'll give you both of those at the end of the program. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you'll find all of the, the website information there and be able to uh, to connect with them. Allison, you say in the book, and this is what makes this program and your amazing story so credible, there are both instantaneous changes and evolutionary changes, and there are also regressions and the need to learn some lessons over and over again. Talk about that because so often when we hear of a program, yeah, this is going to work, you know, a couple of sessions, you'll be a new person, your life will change. And you're saying it, it really, you'll see some changes, but it'll take some, some time and there'll be a, a regression or two along the way. Yes. And what I, what I experience is that particularly with maybe deep seated emotions, or let's just take, I'm not good enough every once in a while still as I try something new and I see that I'm not making the progress that I thought I should or at the speed I should, I kind of dig inside of that and I say, what's really going on here? And sometimes it is just fear of doing something new. Sometimes it is I'm not good enough. And that brings me back to uh, some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. And a great thing too now in high performance coaching is that all of these things come together in a different framework uh, that uh, David is certified in, that I'm certified in, and it allows us to continue to learn and grow, particularly as we coach others. I'm a teacher, they may be a client or a student, but guess what, I am learning as much from them as they are learning from me. And David, yeah. do you find that in working with people like Allison, the people who come to you, it's a two-way process. You probably learn something new every day as, you, as you're dealing with, with, with your people. Yeah, I've seen it all, Rick. I've seen it. <laughs> I tell my class, I said, there's nothing you're going to tell me I haven't heard before. So they, uh, and there's a trust, you know, there. It's, it's like a doctor. And um, it, it's amazing how... I, I learn as much from them as, I, as, as they do from me, and uh, it's a very healing process. I, I actually get energy out of these sessions rather than drain, mm -hmm. um, and, and doing that kind of work, helping people shift. You know, you, you can see a lot of people, they'll leave after that first session, and they'll come back a week later, and they'll say, people kept coming at me, what are you doing different? You look different. You look more calm. You look more, did you get a haircut? What's going on? What are you doing? Because... They literally, after that first session, all the stress has relieved, released their body and their face looks calmer. They look younger. It's an amazing thing. They stand up and they go, I go, your body's going to feel different when you get up because you've been running on cortisol and adrenaline, stress hormones. Mm -hmm. Over the next three weeks, your oxytocin and serotonin will come up if you're a female. If you're a male, it's testosterone and dopamine. So they literally shift physically, mentally, and emotionally. Uh, after that first session, it's amazing. They come back in, it's almost like they're a different person. That has to be rewarding when you see someone like an Ellison come back in with a smile on their face and it's like, you know, I'm really, I'm progressing and I feel good about myself again. With us on the program, Allison Lanza Falls and David Prudhomme. The book is Be Happy Now from Wall Street Ambition and the Illusion of Success, My Path to Happiness. I'm going to touch on the six steps of happiness, time going by way too quickly, but something you you talk about in one of the steps, choosing your words more carefully. Talk about the power of that because I think so often what we tell ourselves or what we express verbally really is what sort of establishes the path we're going to go down. And if we're doing something and expressing it in a negative way, chances are it's going to turn out negative. Actually, the, the brain has a negative bias. So we are actually, we've developed over evolution to look for the things that are wrong so we can fix them or protect ourselves. So we're always going to focus on that more. And whatever you focus on, the subconscious increases. So it's about positive self-talk. The average person's self-talk is 1,500 words a minute. You can't talk that fast, but you can think that fast. And if it's negative, you're just reinforcing the negative. And the amazing thing is in the past 10 years, we have 
learn so much about the brain and the neural networks and the idea that you can take a one lane highway in your brain and turn it into a super highway by how you talk to yourself. And when I go out and play golf, which I love to play golf, this is perfect time of year, it's a great way to apply it very practically. You know, you're standing on the tee, there's water in front of you, <laughs> and people say, don't go in the water. Well, the brain doesn't understand the word don't, and guess what? Go in the water, yes. Don't go in the trap, you go in the trap. So how we talk to ourselves influences our performance, either in sports, in business, and just personally with our children and with our spouses. We used to joke on the golf course when we were playing together and she'd do something and I'd say, you need to go back to chapter five and read it again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or I would think, David, if you wanted to, I've got a little, uh, a few bucks on the line, you're playing Allison, you just say, uh, don't hit it in the water and see what, I, <laughs> now, now you know that, now you know the trick when you're playing golf or doing something with somebody, you plant that negative seed and, and take advantage of it. You wouldn't do that though. That, I never uh, use my powers for evil, Ray. That's <laughs> my, it's my devious minded work and I apologize for that. We've got to, just a couple minutes left in the program. Step number one, the six steps of happiness you'll find in the book, Be Happy Now, the power to choose. And we've talked about that, but that's number one for a reason talk about how important that is and once we get over that maybe the rest of these are at least at least a little easier to attain once we realize these are our choices we're making nobody is making us do these things we're making these choices yeah, we grow up and and we we grow up with the idea that this person made me angry this person made me frustrated this yes. person made me happy and this person made me sad but it's actually a choice we're choosing to be happy sad angry or frustrated so once we know that you know, we, we can't control the weather, we can't control the economy, we can't control our friends, our spouses, our children. But one thing we can control is ourselves. So when you, t you understand that, you stop trying to control everything outside of you and you take back control of you, your choices, your behaviors, and your emotions. And in taking back control, one of the biggest steps is accepting yourself just as you are, right where you are. And at the back of the book, if people are, are perhaps a little skeptical about how much change can actually occur over the course of six or seven months, go, I suggest they go to the appendix. And there is a list of over 30 changes I made in the mind, body, spirit that have stuck now for nine years. They've taken root and they just continue to deepen and grow. And there are plenty of self-help books out there. Yeah that have procedures and processes and checklists to do. Um, in reality, it's your experiential learning. It's your perception, yes. changing, shifting your perception, shifting your thoughts. And by using the subconscious mind, those changes are permanent. You're not using willpower. Willpower is 10% of the mind. That's why it doesn't work. If you take 10% of your mind and say, I really shouldn't eat that ice cream, and 90% of your mind say, eat the ice cream, is gonna make you feel better, you're eventually gonna eat the ice cream. Exactly. So, in the subconscious mind, which most people don't understand or know anything about, but it's operating all the time. When you're driving a car, after you learn how to drive a car, subconscious takes over. So everything you learn how to do then becomes a habit. And the good habits are great, but the ones that you want to change that aren't working for you or in your life or in your relationships are easy to change when you use the subconscious. All of this and so much more in their book, Be Happy Now, From Wall Street Ambition and the Illusion of Success, my Path to Happiness, Ellison Lanza Falls, and David S. Prudhomme. The book's available, of course, at Amazon. Uh, look for Be Happy Now, and uh, just, you can find it at Amazon. Individually, Allison's website is allisonlanza, L-A-N-C-A, falls.com. And David's is David S. Prudhomme, P-R-U-D-H-O-M-M-E, dot com. That's a lot there. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you'll find all the information on where to get the book and information on Allison as well as David. It's been really fun having you with us on the program today. Allison, David, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I've been taking notes as we've been talking here. Uh, so much great information, the six steps to happiness included in the book. Thank you for being with us. Go back outside, enjoy some of the day along beautiful Lake Erie today. It's been great to have you with us on the program. Thanks, Rick. It's a great show. And if you ever need a session, give me a call. And thank you, Rick. It's our pleasure.
Thank you so much. This has been uh, fun. Hopefully we can do this again. The book is Be Happy Now from Wall Street Ambition and the Illusion of Success, My Path to Happiness. Allison Lanza Falls and David S. Prudhomme are guests on the program. The program is This Week in America. Information on their book available at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back after these messages. Thanks again.